Okay, folks, here we are once again, and we are going to be doing a little bit of an exploration of HTML and CSS. As you can see right now, I have my Cyberduck program open, Text Wrangler, and then, of course, the fallback Dreamweaver. Okay, so these are the three programs that we're going to be taking a look at today. Uh, first of all, on the Cyberduck program, this is my view of our cohort server space. Uh, I have a top level view. You guys probably are only allowed to take a look inside of your little server space. Inside of there, you may or may not see any files. Under class directory, doesn't look like there's any actual files in there right now. Okay. The first thing we're going to do, counterintuitively, before we start doing this project is we are going to create a folder. So using, rather than all those high-tech programs that I just showed you, good old Finder or File Manager if you are on a PC, the desktop where everything belongs obviously, you're going to create a folder and you're going to name it uh, Dave's Site. Not necessarily Dave's site, your site. Now, why the underscore? You guys have probably seen stuff like this before, uh, particularly if you are using the save for web commands in Photoshop, or if you've looking at, looked at web addresses in things like WordPress or any of these other programs, you'll notice that they use underscores or hyphens for the spaces between words. That's because web browsers really, really, really don't like spaces. Uh, they also sometimes will hiccup on older browsers with hyphens, and then WordPress in its previous iterations would have a problem with underscores. So uh, for a while there, we were kind of pissed off because it was damned if you did and damned if you didn't. Um, you'll also notice sometimes with some older web programs, when there's a space between words, they'll put a little bit of gobbledygook in there. Uh, usually it's something like percent sign two zero. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on when we start dealing with some more sophisticated web technologies like JavaScript. But basically, point is, for the name of your site, you usually want to have some kind of an underscore for objects on your site you're going to want to have no spaces, either an underscore or a hyphen, okay? So in Dave's site, or whatever your site may be named, next we're going to create a little folder called images. Okay, that's fairly standard. That's all we're going to need to do for now. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be saving our HTML files into this folder, and then we're going to be saving our images into, of course, the Images folder. Wow, I know this is very complex right now. Take a deep breath. Very cool. Moving on. Now that we have a place to store everything, that being the folder on our desktop, as I've always said, where all things should be stored, let's set about creating the HTML that we're going to be storing in this site, okay? So, Back to Text Wrangler, or Text Edit, or whichever stripped-down text editing program you're using, we are going to type in first doc type, oops, doc type HTML. Now, the exclamation point, I know with some of you I have threatened to rip the exclamation key off of your keyboards because you kind of overdo it a little bit. Here, all an exclamation point uh, inside of these little brackets here means is it's telling the, the computer, hey, what's coming in here? Uh, don't make this appear on the screen. Now, as to why an HTML doc type. Remember, we went over this in class, HTML flavors. The HTML5 CSS3, as it says here, the hot new flavor, the new hotness. And then XHTML, that's HTML with rules. HTML 1.0 through 4.0 is where things got a little dicey for us. 
everybody was kind of just making stuff up as they went along and there were really no rules and things started getting really messy so then they came to XHTML and I'm listing WAML here. Uh, WAML is uh, as it says it was used for very old cell phones it was basically kind of like the best way I can describe it is it, it was lobotomized HTML it had a lot of the functions stripped out and it was for like really tiny phones and tiny little screens that had no memory and not much capability but it was there so that some very simple web pages like stock quotes uh, banking stuff um, for professionals could be displayed on those old phones. I put it here only so that you guys can take a look at it. Um, HTML5, as I've said, it's kind of like those old Russian nesting dolls. Uh, inside of HTML5, the thing that really makes it go is CSS3. Inside of CSS3, the thing that really makes it go is JavaScript. Once again, this is an XHTML file. Uh, as you can see up at the top, all the red gobbledygook there, it's a little bit more complex. We've kind of streamlined it a little bit with just what we call simple HTML. Okay, so if you see this, this is usually an older uh, site. If you guys do a reveal codes on uh, a website and you start seeing stuff like this up at the top in the header, you'll know that this is a website that's probably older. This is more modern. Okay, all right. Now that we've explained that, and there are many oceans of complexity to everything, I won't go into the weeds every time, but I think that some little grounding should be good. Back to our text editor, HTML. Okay, we're opening up a tag. We've told the computer, hey, there's an HTML document here. We've got that little exclamation point. Now we're actually telling the computer, yes, HTML is about to start coming at you. What kind of HTML are we going to do? Well, let's do the head. In the head, as I've said, that's all the stuff where we put in loading in JavaScript or, in this case here, our title, which is Dave LaFontaine, Fontaine's J509 example. And then, Whenever you have a tag, you have to close that tag. If you don't do that, you will see errors. Okay, so once again, we've opened up the tag for the head. We're now going to have to close the tag for the head. Okay, so type that in, type in your title, type in your name, close the title, close the head. That then will put the little title at the top of the web browser. Now, what comes next? Well, what comes below your head? Yes, it's your body. No, if some of you said neck, you're a smartass. Body. Okay. Now, in your body, that's where all the text is going to appear. That's where the photos appear. That's where the videos appear. That's where animations appear. That's where all the stuff that the public gets to see appears. I said I wasn't going to do a side light. I'll do a little one right here. The spacing in between these lines. You can have a thousand spaces in between them. It really doesn't matter. We do things like that, put spaces between stuff. It's just so that we can read it a little bit easier. If you had all of this all on the same line, for example, like this, it really wouldn't make any difference. It's just a little bit harder to figure out what's going on organizationally. So, it's just good practice to try to do this so you can read down the page a little bit easier than you can read across because otherwise your eyes tend to glaze over. All right, moving on. Inside of the body, we're going to open up an H1 tag. An H1 tag is a headline tag. It's the biggest headline tag. Just as point of reference, this is what they look like. H1, H2, H3, H4, and then just a plain old paragraph. If you want to see what the code looks like behind the scenes, you hit split in Dreamweaver and you start to be able to see what the coding looks like. All right, back to our little text wrangler. So we've got an H1 tag here. And we're going to say 
David LaFontaine Portfolio Site. And what do I do? I have to close the H1 tag. Okay. It's giving me an error there. Woohoo, I hit the parentheses. This is one of the reasons why Text Wrangler is actually pretty cool. Okay. All right. It uh, tries to tell you in real time when you're screwing up. Or normally it would just be you guys in my classroom throwing pencils at me. All right. So here under the paragraph tag is where we start writing our paragraph. David LaFontaine is a professor at the Annenberg School for Journalism and Communication at USC. Just a simple little sentence telling me who you are. Now, if that's all I wanted to do here, you would then close the body tag. Because remember, we open the body tag here, and then we have to close them in reverse order. So what was above the body tag? Head tag? No, we already closed that. HTML. So, close the HTML tag. And then we've got a nice little document here. Does this thing actually work? Well, here's how you find out. Hit save. Dave underscore LaFontaine. This is going in Dave's site. Save. Now, how do we test this out? The way we test it? is by opening up this little page in a browser. How do we do this? Oh my, it's so complex. No, we don't Google ourselves. We haven't yet uploaded this to the web. Google is really, really good, but it can't Google things that are hidden on your computer's hard drive just yet. That's the NSA's job. Okay, open file. There it is, Dave LaFontaine. HTML, open it, and there it is. Oh my, my first HTML site, and it actually opens up and it works in a browser. Now, if you want to take a look at view page source, you see all the stuff that I just typed, okay? Like I said, you can do that for any page on the web. The last step here is going to be using Cyberduck. That's right, or whichever FTP program you have. You can also use Fetch or FileZilla. Let's go to a little Cyberduck. All right, here in the class directory, I have created a subdirectory, First Web Experiments. Click on that. What we're going to be doing here is we are going to be uploading. Upload, and then we choose off of the desktop, Dave's site, Dave LaFontaine, HTML. 